All right, guys, have to come back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Some spicy drama once again returning to the competitive COD scene with new mid to this pickup fellow talking about the eights he's played over the last few days and a certain player who's on over $200,000 per year not paying him the 20 bucks he earned by winning eights and getting very frustrated, understandably, as a result. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate that. The joke here is about Havoc looking like Lord Farquaad in this this image on the right hand side but at least they've not got the um the green hair havoc which they used to use for the last couple of years which is finally gone despite some general positivity around the way ranked play has been received it must be said that the game still isn't in the greatest state ever look at what happens to clay here so first of all he spawns up in this corner which and as he spawns up here the team is right to his left and this isn't really the worst spawn in the world but um, it's not ideal he dies within a couple of seconds and the next spawn is outrageous he spawns right here between all four of the arrows i've no idea why they put him here. He spawns it within one second, the guy's to his left having a knife fight, and Capsule knifes him because, I mean, Capsule obviously didn't expect Clay to spawn there either, so Capsule was running with his knife out, and Clay was like absolutely mind blown that he spawned in between of these four, you know, literally all four blue arrows. Clay spawned in between them, and then immediately got knifed. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking here with these spawns, but uh, you guys can see here, this was uh, what the minimap looked like. So, they were over at this uh, control point, I guess, control point A. His team was on the the other side and uh, out of all four of these guys on the Florida side I think it was yeah it must have been Florida right there playing uh, Havoc and Co then he just spawns right here and gets immediately knifed by Capstore I was not expecting Clay to be spawning up there so yeah I've never seen that one before I don't know if with these new spawns or with these new update spawns change because everyone says that whenever a new update comes through the game crashes a bit the game breaks the scanner repair issues all this stuff starts to happen again and um, you know you get potentially weird spawn changes you get like footsteps equalization start. I think people say maybe the footsteps are louder now or they're quieter now or whatever right I don't know but sometimes they don't even intend to change things and then things just happen naturally I guess that's just infinity ward at work baby speaking of Clayser though I thought it was interesting to look at this quickly so this is the average age per CDL team updated going into stage 3 the youngest team on average is the Toronto Ultra at 21.3 years of age on average then Surge which is pretty interesting actually like considering how young I guess Pred and Sib and Mac still is compared to accuracy is obviously a bit of a, an OG but still there's the second youngest team then Boston which I guess has come down with Methods Retirement then Optic at 22 flat then Gorillas, Subliners, Ravens, Thieves I mean you can see how young all the teams are as well like the average like in the league is what 22.5 something like that then you get to the older teams which are still even Thieves only 23 ish average given the fact you're Octane on there and I mean like obviously he's been around a long time so is Kenny, Envoy as well but I guess you know Draza and Co. Bring the Asians out a little bit. Florida at 23, then FaZe at 23.3. Same with Rocker, and then the oldest by quite the margin is Vegas, average 25. But of course, um, a lot of that is brought up by Clayster, who's the oldest player in the league. So I thought it was interesting to see this. I don't know if this is um, updated. I think this is actually before the roster changes, but still gets the point across this kind of bar graph here of how 18, 19, you don't get too many. Once they get to 20, though, then you get all the players. And by the time you get to 24, you're on the decline. It's kind of crazy. Like, I'm 24 in a couple of months. So, uh, interesting to think about, right? That the majority of the pro players are younger than myself now. But, uh, you know, here's Clay up here. 28 years old, of course. Uh, Slasher falls into that category. But, uh, yeah, this is the more recently updated one. So, I guess since, like, Scump's retirement and everything, you're now at one 28-year-old, one 30-year-old. Clay's, like, you know, stop posting age. But I do think it, um, honestly, is, like, more flattering to Clay in a way that he's still able to compete and play at this level when the majority of the pros are, like, seven years younger than him now. So, let's talk about this drama then which may or may not involve Pred there's been some discussions that maybe the man that fellow's talking about here is Pred maybe it's somebody else he did actually just still make the major two MVP ladder post major two so I voted in this I don't know if my vote was a little bit too late to be included but I went for Abizi, Hydra, I put Selium in there and I put Dashi and Octane in there. I think Simp to me is just on the cusp, as is Scrappy, as is, um, you know, maybe Afro. I think Pred should also be maybe top 10. But okay, Pred's been playing great, don't get me wrong. But Surge, if, after they come top 12, kind of tough to have him still in there, I think. I think that Octane deserves a shot. He was so good at the major and super important to that team right now. And I even said before the year that I think Octane could have a good year in him. So hopefully he keeps up that level. And then Dashi apparently wasn't even voted for at all in the 
the top five, which I can kind of get because obviously Optic weren't particularly close to winning the events. But, um, you know, I think there's an argument to say that Dashi might have been the best player in the venue that past weekend. So I feel like he's got to be at least in conversation. So, um, yeah, that was at least my top five. A little bit different to this, but still understandable. But Fred being here was a little bit surprising, even though he has played phenomenal so far this season. But he's certainly been rubbing some people up the wrong way. We saw with TJ Halley the other day. They weren't obviously, well, he wasn't so happy with TJ. And the other way around as well. Don't know what the team internally thinks of Fred calling himself the LeBron of the Cavs or the Seattle Surge team. But, um, you know, we'll see if their chemistry is completely destroyed when we go into this upcoming stage, despite the fact that, of course, they're running it back, kind of surprisingly from my perspective. Now, Fellow, since being a pro again, technically, in the professional league, playing for Mutineers, has been playing at Pro 8s over the last couple of days. And, uh, okay, the way the 8s tend to work, at least traditionally, each player would chuck in like $20. I don't really know how much money they put in nowadays, but they chuck $20 in. Eight of them, of course, that's $160. And then, you know, the team that wins gets the $160 split between them, all this stuff. And the players will just like cash app or PayPal or whatever the case is to the guys that won that day. And, uh, you know, just a way to spice it up a little bit more than not playing for any money. I believe back in Modern Warfare, the CDL said, no, you guys, you can't play this for money anymore. And whether that rule still exists, I don't know. Or whether nobody really cares anymore. The players just do it anyway. Or, you know, how can you really stop the pro players? And what's even a good reason for doing so? I don't know. But fellow last night suggests that one player at least, who's on over $200,000 salary in this league, refuses to pay him for his victory in eights. People have been speculating who this might be, especially because there's some players that are known to take their time, let's say, paying out after they lose a series. So, um, I mean, yeah, I'll share the clips. Never understand. Mm. When people are on over $200,000 contracts and I can't get paid from eights. Who's not paying you? Listen, bro, I'm not exposing names. All I know is I was very disappointed. Heard. It's all good. I told them I'm either getting my payment via cash or I'm taking their shoes. So whatever, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to pay with. The door, watch out. What are you waiting on? Yeah. Gonna go get some hard-boiled eggs. Is that what he? Is that what he eats? No way. Yeah. I think it's hard-boiled eggs as a snack. Yeah, we we were scrimming in Seattle one day, Tom, and they were 30 minutes late. And we were like tweaking on them, and then uh, they texted Lamar. Texted us, "Yeah, sorry, he's cutting. He's getting his hard-boiled eggs." And we yeah. just chalked the scream. Yeah, it's comedy. Yep. Let's go, AG. Let's go. Let's go, bro. So dude. <laughs> Holy, <laughs> Terry had a stinker. <laughs> yeah, no, that was on you. That was like a one versus one, and like you were just putting him down. Terry went down. <laughs> Where'd he go? No, I, think you were all 23 of his, I think you were all 23 of his death. <laughs> <laughs> that was the weirdest fortune I've I also want to show another couple of clips there of uh, prayers, you know, having a go at TJ, right? Because those two have certainly had a fair bit of friction over the last few days. And even Octane, who said that there was a scrim that they were meant to play against Surge, they had to cancel it because Pred was out getting his hard boiled legs or something. I don't know. But uh, I mean, okay, whatever. Weird reason or excuse. But nonetheless, clearly the Thieves guys were like, oh, this Pred guy, you know, is torching our time. All this, so yeah, definitely been rubbing a few people up the wrong way lately. Draza, we know, is the eight demon, right? This guy has been on a crazy winning streak in eights. He's probably the guy that has won the most money on this over the last few months. People have looked into this to try and figure out who Fellow is talking about. And of course, at the end of the day, someone being on 200k plus does narrow it down a bit, right? In terms of the players it can be, there's only a select amount of players in the league that are probably on that type of salary, and um, you know, it's potentially players on the surge. Don't know what thieves run, but could be a similar number. I don't know. Pretty interesting, though, to think about that he kind of mentioned the salary numbers as well. Of course, I don't know, fellow, if he knows the exact number that these guys might be on. But uh, this was some of the discussion. So people looked into it and thought, OK, who did they play last night? And apparently they played Arsatiz. Now, Arsatiz is a sound guy. I don't think it'll be him. Or Draza or Pred. So this is the thing, right? With Draza winning the majority of his series, he plays an eight. I don't really doubt that he's got a problem paying people. So that's when people come back to Pred and they're like, OK. Because I think people even said that Pred, I don't know about about this for sure because I'm usually asleep when the majority of these series are going on to watch at night but people say that sometimes Pred has a bit of a reputation for paying a bit late so you know I don't necessarily think that he's not going to pay fellow or anything but it's more like a principle thing you know like if you lose a series you owe the guy 20 bucks you just pay him the 20 bucks like I guess that's what fellow thinks and he's frustrated at a player that's only that amount of money doesn't want to do it and um, I think there was a story of Pred and TJ they played like a series like they played like a 2k wager or something and not $2,000 but NBA 2k 
playwright or whatever. They played something and then Pred took a long time to pay him and all this. Not like he wouldn't, but like, um, you know, just some frustrations on taking a long time to get around to it. Reminds me a little bit of this moment you guys may or may not remember from 2021 when Krim and Formal had a fair bit of a back and forth. And this was obviously a much larger sum of money, but this was for the Infinite Warfare World Championship MVP. So the team had promised them, well, this is the Optic Dynasty, right? So Optic, uh, Formal, Krim 6, Scump and Karma. Going into the tourney, they had apparently promised each other like, hey, whoever wins the MVP, let's share that money between our team. I think we're talking like $25,000 or something for the MVP winnings. And they said, you know what, let's just share it out whoever wins. Now, of course, Formal won the tournament, won the MVP in a like best ever tournament performance type level. Like if Formal wasn't dropping a 1.44 over the tournament, then Optic probably don't win. So, you know, you could argue he earned his MVP money, but they'd agreed to split it. And Krim, as he replies here back in June 2021, like I imagine scumming your brothers out of six to seven K because of pure selfishness and ego. I don't even care about the money. So that's the thing, right? Krim, like, okay, six, seven K, whatever. Krim will survive without it. It's not for Krim about the money. It's more about the principle, a formal kind of, well, promising to do it and then refusing to. And it's kind of the same thing here. Like, fellow doesn't really care about the 20 bucks, right? I'm sure he'll survive. But it's more about the principle of the player that's on 200K not paying up when, you know, they need to pay up and fellow's got to chase him for the money and all this, which is understandable. So yeah, I don't know. Who do you guys think it is? Because it's kind of a secret who with this player that he's referring to is. Most people would probably imply that it might be Pred. It might not be Pred. It could be someone entirely different. We don't have the full story, but uh, yeah, just a nice bit of uh, petty Call of Duty beef and drama to keep up on going forward. Just wanted to mention before we close out here a couple of line man cards as well. These are the Los Angeles Thieves guys. This is like, a, you look at the numbers here across the team. Now, the numbers are calculated by some sort of algorithm that just like generates what rating they should have. Obviously, these numbers are actually determined by their actual performance, but it does go to show again that all four players are playing at like a very similar level at times. I still feel like Draz is underrated. Look at the numbers here, pretty impressive stuff. But um, I mean, yeah, it's just one of those things where the team is all playing at a very similar level. And that's what they did last year when they won major foreign champs. So maybe a sign of things to come for them. This also is, of course, the Atlanta phase cards. Abizi gets a 99, somehow didn't win the MVP. Not exactly sure why. Sim got the MVP for 90. I mean, Sim played great, don't get me wrong. But I mean, Abizi was just like, he's the best player in the game right now, in my opinion. Slasher ends up with a 76, which I thought was quite funny here, because his numbers aren't bad, Slasher, and obviously he has a massive impact on the team, but I guess because the rest of the team just takes all the kills, like, if you look at his control kills per 10 minutes, they're one of the lowest in the league, but that's largely because Abizi just gets all the kills, so, you know, I guess that's just one of those things. And even Crimsix was wondering here in the replies, hang on a second, how did Abizi not get the holographic cards, even though, you know, he wasn't awarded MVP by the, the CDL, of course. They gave it to Sim, but, uh, you know, as Crim says, how did he not get the holographic? You know, he is him and him is chosen. And, uh, you know, Beezy can still out sim race you in a go kart. False, he can't see over the steering wheel. So, good way to end it. Very much enjoyed your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.